there's the negative seed. You know, you're always battling. Uh, 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 you know, in, in if you're to look at gardening and such, you're always battling. We were at a friend's place last night, and they were uh, pouring concrete so that, that literally their backyard will be a cement slab because it, you know they're not going to have to battle weeds anymore. They're not going to, you know. And uh, they were joking around about you know certain ethnic groups that love to have just the concrete because then there's no grass to to keep up. And I thought, yeah, that's right, you know, because there's always this battle of weeds and stuff. That's all based on the fall of man, right? You know, you, you think about it, it's your home, you know, keep your lawn just right, you're always battling stuff. Well, that seems like it's the fall of man, that's why you have weeds and, and things that are oppressive. Now, you battle those in the natural, but also you need to understand that we battle those in the spiritual. That the enemy tries those things to try and put those seeds in your life and let them grow. And you've got to begin to say, no, in Jesus' name, I'm not letting them grow. In Jesus' name, I'm not letting them stand anymore. You've got to begin to, you know, there used to be a song we sung in Jamaica. It said, shut the door, uh, keep out the devil, light the candle, everything will be all right. And so, you know, you need to begin to do that and say, you know what, I'm not going to allow the oppressor to try and come in. Because that's what he's trying to do. And so we see that, and that's based on the fall of man. And then we also know that because of the fall of man, when God was walking in the garden, uh, or sorry, Adam and Eve were walking in the garden, they heard the, God was walking, sorry, and they heard him, and they covered up. And God, tried, God said, you know, who told you that you were naked? Because the enemy wants to fill you full of shame and self, self-doubt. Shame and self doubt that somehow you're not really worthy that somehow you can't really get there that somehow you know it's for the other person not for you it's only going to work for them because they're more spiritual or they're more loved of god it's impossible for god so loved the world that he gave his son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish so that means it's for you that's something that 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 you need to begin to look at in your life now so Jesus is anointed, Acts 10.38, you should remember that one, because God anointed Jesus. Now, um, John 14.10, we read that, but it talks about how the Father dwells in me and He does the work. That's really what you've got to count on. When Sandra sung that song, He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. You know, sometimes it's easy to go, well, you know, I don't know, we just finished a kitchen renovation and, and, and you know, we're going to maybe hopefully do a, d- a dining room renovation and sometimes in your mind you're like, oh man, is it ever going to end? Is it ever going to end? There's always something under construction. Well, it feels like your life can be under construction, but he who began the good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it. Amen? Amen. Faithful to complete it. And sometimes when we're not faithful, we know that God is always faithful. And so that's simply where you come before the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me in those areas where I haven't been faithful, but I thank you that I'm moving forward in you and I am being found faithful. Amen? Amen. And so it's the anointing. You've got to count on the anointing that does the work. Sometimes, you know, you're trying to do things and go, well, you know, we prayed for people today, you know, and, and, and I'm so thankful that I was prayed for. But when you're stepping out and praying for someone, it's not me doing it. It's the anointing. It's the anointing of God, the empowerment, the dunamis power. So you've got to realize that it's not you to figure it out, but it's God that's working to do his good pleasure. In Acts 10.38, the word says, it says all. God provided for all, all of us. What did he provide for? For sickness, for pain, all right? Not just anything, you know, uh, just just he, specifically things in your life that mean the most to you. If you're in sickness, or if you're in pain, or if you're in debt, or if you're in recovery, God has got something special for you. I remember there was a time when we went to a place, and, and, and uh, we're sitting at a table, and they had like a you know, psychic nights or whatever it was, and they weren't going on when we were there, but they were advertising this spiritual uh, awakening thing. And, you know, the world is trying to find, you know, all of the spiritual awakening to somehow help them move forward and to help them, you know, get through life. Well, we've got the Holy Spirit on the inside. We've got that dunamis power, that anointing on the inside that says, you know what, we don't have to try and conjure up some weird spirit. We've got Jesus that lives on the inside of us, and, the, and, and we know that the Word says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We know that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. And so any oppression has to go in the name of Jesus. And so when you see that and begin to believe that, that's when you're going to start seeing your miracle. Because by faith they inherit the promise. By faith they move mountains. By faith they speak the things. But you need to open your mouth. 
Amen. You need to open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, I thank you that by faith my mountain is destroyed. My mountain is moved. My mountain is cast into the sea and it's gone in the name of Jesus. And you're moving forward into the things of God. But you've got to do that. Amen? God gives you the choice. God gives you the opportunity with your mouth. So with faith and with patience, they inherit the promise. Go with me over to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Okay, we're there. It says, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. It says, Is any, any one among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And he, if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven him. If you confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You need to remember that you're righteous. God didn't just move into a trash can. He moved into you. And you're a righteous person. The Bible says you're the righteousness of God in Christ. But I want you to notice at 14 and 15, it says, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Don't be praying in fear and in doubt and wondering, well, will God, and maybe God will, and maybe God won't. Maybe God won't this time. Maybe God might, but he didn't last time. Maybe he'll do it for the neighbor, but not for me. No. You have a prayer of faith that says, the word says, this is for me. If any man among you, if anyone among you is sick, let him pray. Okay? So it's not just supposed to be for specific people. It's supposed to be for everyone because we know that Jesus went about doing good and healing all. Then we notice in, 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 at the end of verse 16, it says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It didn't say that ineffective. It said the effective fervent. How, how many know fervent means you've got to put some oomph into it? Some power into it. Amen? Power of expecting. Because it says here, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Righteous means I'm righteous simply because God says I am. Not because my body feels I am. Not because my head says I am. Not because the book says I am. But because God says I am. And so when you find that you've fallen down, when you find that you feel like you can't get up, you begin to say, I'm righteous because God says I am. It said here, Confess your trespasses and pray for one another that you may be healed. You know, there's something to really catch there. Don't allow unforgiveness to stop your healing. Don't allow unforgiveness to stop what God wants to do in your life. He said, confess your uh, trespasses. And so you don't want to get carried away with that and start all you ever do is talk about what wrong you do. But if God prompts you to say, you know, uh, may maybe you've got a situation you need to speak out about, go to that person and talk to them. Maybe you can ask forgiveness and pray with one another. But you've got to remember here that God is saying that, you know, unforgiveness, the Bible says where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. Well, every evil work can be a lot of things. It could be death. It could be, you know, crazy things, all right? And that can happen there because there's envy and strife. And so you don't want that to be there. And so he said here to confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. You're going to start to avail much. Amen? Amen. Go with me to 2 Timothy 2. 